conducting research using his own body. There's nothing unusual about this for Dr. Nico Dosenbach. The neuroscientist would lie for hours in an MRI scanner after midnight for scans of his brain. It's safe, Flatline. unlike the idea behind the movie Flatliners. Do you have plans tonight? Do you want to have fun with me later? Midnight basement sub-level C. <laughs> it's late night or early morning in, in the dark, you know, by yourself. Nobody's around in the facility. Only at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. It's not in the basement. It still felt very sort of stealthy. And why not? After midnight is considerably less expensive. Scanning charges with the MRI are 90% off. As to why exactly, it's the best way for Dostenbach and his colleagues to uncover the mysteries of the human brain. For this to happen, he wanted more brains for his research, which meant getting creative for recruitment by having fun with it. Scientists aren't thought of as being sort of cool or goofy necessarily, and so um, we, we, we tried our own nerdy version of like a club or a gang. <laughs> This TV drama about a motorcycle club, Sons of Anarchy, gave Dosenbach the idea to form a club for his gang of enterprising scientists called Midnight Scan Club. Instead of a skull on leather for a logo, he has a brain on a club t-shirt. It's just for fun. None of us have motorcycles, I can show you, or even leather jackets. After midnight, they took turns in an MRI scanner, generating a massive amount of high-quality data, making discoveries and publishing papers. Being still for hours in an MRI scanner, that's worth a t-shirt. But doing it like this? <laughs> you get quite the reaction. They're like, oh my God, what happened? You break your arm? And you say, no, actually it's for research. They really want to know what kind of crazy you are. Not crazy at all, not with what he would discover by scanning his brain for six weeks before, during, and after immobilizing his primary arm, wrist, and hand. He would scan his brain after hours every day. Okay, now's the point where you say it's all a joke. But this is no joke. Dosenbach wanted to know about the plasticity of the adult brain to see how plastic it may be, meaning its ability to adapt and rewire itself, responding to functional changes. What the cast did is reduced uh, use of the pre previously dominant arm by as much as having a stroke would. He decided to be put into this cast for two weeks, but before it got this far, he had to get approval. Most people were like, you can't do that. This is a little crazy. Nobody wants to do that. You won't be allowed to do that. So I decided because of those comments, I met with folks in the, in the internal review board and you know, made sure everybody was agreed that was ethical. And I wrote a whole protocol about how I was going to experiment on myself and how if I wasn't comfortable with being in my study, I would let myself quit my own study, things like that. Now that the pink cast study, as they called it, is published, the Midnight Scan Club has a new look. And it's not just hot pink. Dosenbach chose the eye-catching color as a form of marketing for recruitment. So lots of people would ask me what had happened. And so I would just go around telling the story to people. And sure enough, people started lining up saying, hey, I want to do it. This was followed by a neon yellow cast and another member's neon green. The data showed the adult brain is more plastic than expected. They discovered how quickly the brain adapted to the immobilized limb. Now that your two arms aren't working together anymore, it's really just your left arm is doing everything and the other arm is just dangling. Within about two days, the connection between your left and right motor cortex disappeared. In the brain scans, they found previously undetected brain pulses that activate quickly within two days. Huge spikes in spontaneous activity, sharp looking, that, that normally aren't ever there. They were very much specific to the parts of the brain that had been disused. So they're kind of shocking because you can see them with the naked eye. All you have to do is plot out the data. Dosenbach says they are disuse pulses or spontaneous bursts of neurons firing. During the two weeks the cats were worn, their brains produced the spontaneous pulses that seem to maintain neural activity in the disused circuits. One thought is that these are actually protective pulses in the sense that the brain sort of 
partially at least expect this arm to come back into action. It's not like we cut it off. You can still have sensory inputs from it, right? You can still feel it. You can see it. This allowed the main motor circuits to reactivate after the cast came off. The neurons quickly began firing again when mobility was regained. Within two days, uh, it felt like everything was back to normal and that, and the brain data showed the same thing. And so instead of sort of letting the circuitry for your upper extremity dissolve, it actually starts making its own activity to keep the circuit protected and alive. It's almost like you put it in storage because you're going to bring it back. And to me, that might be a potential explanation why uh, the, the functional architecture of the brain recovered so quickly. There was a significant effect. Like, I think I lost 30 pounds of grip strength. The grip strength came back all the way to baseline and everybody in two weeks or less. The findings can lead to advances in treatment for people recovering from strokes, broken limbs, or other immobilizing conditions. Really, the brain, we think, is actually much more plastic in, in this functional connectivity domain than we had ever thought. We've got a lot of questions about this. How long does this last? So at some point, the brain can't overcome disuse, but how long that is, nobody really knows. With more questions now begging for answers, Dosenbach says he will need to have another casting call, in a different sense of the term, to cast more members of the club. Dosenbach also thinks of Midnight Scan Club as a type of late-night secret society. Dead Poets Society or something like that. To strive, to seek, to find. Gotta do more, gotta be more. I think science doesn't get enough credit for being sort of fairly creative enterprise. And, and um, you know, the, the spawning of this sort of project was like a meeting at midnight because that's when one of our collaborators, <laughs> that's his lunchtime. <laughs> and we just sort of talking about other things and came up with this. And then I think the part that people didn't really believe was going to happen was, was actually doing it. But we did. And it was very well worth it.